The gigantic waves of Nazare, Portugal is a mecca for big wave surfers, a bucket list item for the few who would take it on. Aussie dad Matt Formston is one of those people. He recently travelled to Nazare with a film crew who are documenting what it's like to take on Mother Nature's might when you're blind. Matt joins us now from California where he's there to compete in the World ISA Parrot Surfing Comp. Matt, you've come via Portugal. Did you get those big waves that you were seeking? Yeah, absolutely. We got, we got, it was a perfect trip. We got, we got some smaller ones and then, you know, small 20 foot to start with and then it built up and we got up to pretty big. So we got, we haven't got the exact measurement yet, but we're somewhere in the 40 to 50, maybe a bit bigger range. It sounds absolutely terrifying. Uh, you're now in yeah. California for the uh, Parasurfing World Championship. You're a three times Parasurfing World Champ. What does it take from you personally and from those around you to get you to this level of surfing? I mean, surfing here at the, the ISA World Championships is very different to surfing at Nazare. Um, so they're, they're two different things as far as mm. training. But I think for me, it's just it's just hard work. It's getting up every day and training and, and you know, focused on those goals. But for Nazare in particular, it was 12 months of work and having to um, to train my breath, which I hadn't done before, um, to a capacity where I could, you know, hold, know that I, if I was held down for a couple of waves, I could hold my breath for minutes. So, you know, I, my, my personal best just before I went to Nazare was uh, one single breath was five minutes and 40 seconds. So yeah. it's it's a lot of different components. But, um, yeah, we, we, we got it all to the right level and we got over there and we got it done. Yeah. Now, I suppose you get asked this all the time, but if you can tell us about both the big waves and also those comp waves that you surf, how do you navigate yeah. them when you can't see? As a blind surfer, yeah, I... Um, I basically, my front foot becomes my cane. So on land, I use a cane sometimes. Sometimes I, I walk, walk around using echolocation, um, which is you know, using sound to navigate. But I basically feel the wave as with my front foot. So as I'm going down the wave, um, I feel the steepness of the wave, and then I know when to turn up the, the wave and turn back around. So in a comp, um, I, I basically, as I get vertical on the wave, I can feel how steep it is, then I turn back down. Um, and then at Nazare, because you know, I was getting towed into the waves with a jet ski, and most sighted surfers will see when they're going to let go of the rope and go down the wave. We used a whistle, so they had an orientation whistle the guys had on, on the skis, um, and they the jet ski would driver would put tow me in and then blow the whistle, and that let me know to let go of the rope. Then I'd go down the wave, and then as I got to the bottom of the wave, they'd blow the whistle to like two, two, two whistles, and I'd turn, and then they as I'd, I'd ride across the wave, and then they'd, another two whistles, and I kick out of the wave. So just using different techniques to sighted people to be able to sort of achieve the same things. Yeah, I'm really struck by the level of trust that you've got to have in them and also they've got to have in, in you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's significant trust and that's what my friend said before I went there is like, are you going to let go of the rope? Because most people wouldn't want to let go of the rope when they're going over the ledge of a 40, 50 foot wave. But um, my friend and, and my board shaper Dylan Longbottom who's one of the best big wave surfers in the world had a really bad experience at Nazare where he got a 50 foot wave on the head um, and what happened is he let go he didn't he let go of the rope and didn't go the wave and then he ended up in a really bad position so before I went he said mate if you want me by the whistle you go and even if you don't make the wave and you get hit, you, you, you get destroyed on the inside you'll get pushed in and you're in a better place whereas if you let go if you don't let go and you end up in that impact zone you're going to get you know, 50, 60 foot wave on the head. So it's, you know, you made the decision. I did all the training and as a team, like I, if they buy the whistle, like there's, you know, there's my tow driver plus three other safety skis. They're all there to keep me alive. But it's, if, if I'm in a bad position, I'm putting them at risk as well. So as a team, we've all got to just do what our job is. And my job was to go down that wave and surf it the best I could. You know, sure, it was a lot of relief from your family. What are the next big goals on the horizon? And when can we see this documentary? Um, so I've got a, my, my biggest goal right now is to win my world title this week um, and, you know, and more importantly, get home and see my family. I've, it's been a really big year for me making this movie and travelling around the world competing and then obviously going to Nazare. So I want to get home and, and give my wife a cuddle and a kiss and hang out with my kids. Uh, and then the movie will probably come out, I'd say, you know, I, I, Dan's uh, the director's a better judge of that, but I think we're looking at mid next year. Matt, it's been a pleasure chatting and good luck in the comp.